today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Harvey Levin here. Charlie Knapp here. Courtney here. Derek here. So, uh, <laughs> we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to start with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, at about 5 o'clock on Friday, okay. uh, we got a tip that Arnold got in a car accident. What we didn't know was it was right out of a movie. Arnold was, let me kind of set the scene here. So Arnold is traveling on Sunset Boulevard in Brentwood, and he is going west. There is a Prius going east on Sunset Boulevard. They both have a green light. The problem is Arnold wanted to turn left. And to Mm. turn left off of Sunset, there is a yield, right? There is a um, left turn arrow. Mm-hmm. Oh. And you have to wait until the arrow turns green, and it doesn't turn green automatically when the other lights turn green. So Arnold apparently, this is according to cops, and also people we talked to at the scene, Arnold apparently thought that the the left turn arrow light was green. It wasn't. It was red. Ooh. And he turned, and he turned into this Prius, and he was driving this, I mean, enormous. Massive Arnold-sized car. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. a Yukon. It's huge. Yeah. It tips over onto the Prius, smashing the Prius, and then tips back and then nails a Porsche. It was. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I mean, just the, the photos, photos were that we insane. got. It, it just doesn't even look real. It looks like a movie set, like what you said, Harvey. It just, it, the crash is crazy. Well, because I was like, how did the SUV get on top of these other two cars? It was like, it was, you have to choreograph also, action sequences yeah, like that. I'm they conf- rarely come out I'm perfectly. confused if he Was thought- anyone hurt? Yes. The woman uh, in the Prius was hurt. And in fact, she was bleeding profusely from her head. She was taken to the hospital by ambulance. Arnold has contacted her directly. We don't know her condition right now. Uh, but it was a really bad accident. Arnold's okay, though, right? Because he's, he's there's a photograph of him walking Standing, around yeah. afterwards. Well, he was, so. And he was he, bicycling uh, over the weekend. So yeah. he's and he okay. was in a car that flipped, but he just walks away fine. He's, he's, he's an action hero. It's an action story Well, all also, around. a Yukon is like a tank. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's true. And and there was somebody he was on top of the Prius. Yes, like, his right. car wasn't underneath the wreckage. Right. There was somebody at the scene who told us, that it literally looked like a it looked like a stunt in a movie. When you are at a light, you have to even if I have a green arrow, I will wait and be hesitant just to make sure. Okay, no one's gonna hit me, right? How many like, horns oh, will get boy, honked being at you? behind Charlie at ten and two in L.A. I'm sure you're a real joy to be behind. Him. So he was, he was not ticketed. What? what? How? Because, but he clearly violated the, well, the left turn and he signal, said right? That he, That's what the cops believe. But also, they I don't. But believe, what did he say? Um, I don't think he said anything, but I have talked to somebody who said it looks, well, the cops are telling us that's the way it looks too. Yeah. And based on something else I know, I think that's probably true. Yeah. Um, but it was not ticketed. A lot of times cops will not ticket if they don't actually see the crash because it's it's an infraction. Right. Yeah. Um, so they just take the report, they write and, it down. Right. And, yeah. and there's, it, obviously there'll be some civil consequences here. Of course. Um, he'll probably settle this thing. I mean, I don't think. I would imagine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if he yeah. turned. And it sounds like even though she's bleeding from the head, she's going to survive. She's not like. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Injured. We don't know. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Up to her. Um, okay. So Bill Maher is back. <laughs> and, um, Your favorite person. Is, he is well. No I, one I, makes a Friday night for Harvey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me just sure. say, I I love I do love Bill Maher, and I love Bill Maher because Bill Maher is real, and he doesn't um, he doesn't just side. He, look, Bill Maher is is a liberal person who gravitates to Democrats, but isn't afraid to say why Democrats make mistakes when they make mistakes. I mean, that's his opinion. There are a lot of people who think Bill Maher should never say anything bad. He's not saying anything bad about Democrats. He's saying, here's how you can win. And and, and I mean, people are confusing those things. Yep. But the big thing that happened on Friday night, he had Barry Weiss on. Barry Weiss is a former New York Times columnist who is now a podcaster. She's an author. She's really, really smart. And she is done with COVID. What she (laughs) said has really triggered a firestorm of controversy. There are a lot of people who think she's acted childish, a lot of people who say she's irresponsible, and there are a lot of people who say she is dead on. Here's what she said. I'm done. With this question? (laughs) No, I'm I'm done with COVID. I'm done. It's like I... 
I went so hard on COVID. I, yeah, I remember. sprayed the Pringles cans that I bought at the grocery store, stripped my clothes off because I thought COVID would be on my clothes. Like, I did it all. I watched Tiger King. I got to the end of Spotify. Like, we all did it, right? And, no, no, we didn't all okay, do it. Well, well, here's the thing. A lot, no, of us, we didn't all do a lot of us did do it. And then we were told, you get the vaccine. You get the vaccine and you get back to normal. And we haven't gotten back to normal. And it's ridiculous at this point. I know that so many of my liberal and progressive friends are with me on this, and they do not want to say it out loud because they are scared to be called anti-vax or to be called science denial or to be you know, smeared as a trumper. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you believe the science, you will look at the data that we did not have two years ago, and you will fi find out that cloth masks do not do anything you will realize that you can show your vaccine passport at a restaurant and still be asymptomatic and carrying Omicron. And you will realize, most importantly, that this is going to be remembered by the younger generation as a catastrophic moral crime. The city of Flint, Michigan, which is 80%, I think, minority students, has just announced indefinite virtual schooling. In the past two years, we've seen among young girls a 51% increase in self-harm. People are killing themselves. They are anxious. They are depressed. They are lonely. That is why we need to end it more than any inconvenience that it's been to the rest of us. I think okay, it's, it's a pandemic. It's, it's like at this point, it's a pandemic of bureaucracy. It's a pandemic of bureaucracy. It's not, yeah, well, it's not real anymore. Uh, look, I mean, uh, let me let me just say the one thing I disagree with her on when she says, hey, um, you know, we did everything we were supposed to do. We got our vaccines and everything else. And it's like, okay, I get that, but things change. And if it were just an issue of we got the vaccines, but then there was a variant and we needed to deal with it, I think we need to accept that. The fact that, you know, you got the vaccine, that doesn't mean, okay, I'm done with it. Right. What I agree with her on is that, you know, we talk about, oh, you got to follow the science, which is all true. You do have to follow the science. But there's something countervailing here, which is what are the consequences to people with this prolonged fear and isolation and everything else? And with kids especially, I think she's right that that that, that there yeah, are going to be ruined generations here. Yeah. I mean, indefinite virtual schooling is the scariest. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a father. And, and the, the notion that kids won't be in school and that being one of the changes that we have to deal with permanently from the pandemic is jaw dropping. I mean, and then there you have will to pay be, for babysitting, right? When you go to, to, uh, it, it's just work. bad for kids. It's not even that you'll have to pay for babies. The, the, the thing that we have to realize, though, is there are going to be some permanent changes from the mm -hmm. pandemic. I mean, from the, you know, the flu pandemic, it permanently pe more people wash their hands. That became a normal part of life, there will be some permanent things, Harvey, right? I mean, it's it's not, she can't say we're done, let's move on, let's revert to society in 2019. Well, also, it's just never going to revert to complete normalcy because this thing has rocked society, civilization across the world. I think what she's saying is it's gone so far that, you know, I was watching um, one of the cables this morning and there was a doctor who was just railing on her saying that it was irresponsible, she was acting childish. Um, and saying we are in the middle of a really dark period where all these thousands of people are dying, which is true. And they are, by and large, unvaccinated people. And at a point, it's like... They're holding know, us hostage. Well, we, we're yeah, again, we, we are, are, we are at loggerheads. We're at loggerheads with the unvaccinated. Yeah. We are at loggerheads with the unvaccinated because, because there are so many unvaccinated people, what's going to give in society? But I think, you know, finally people are saying that you have to balance science and other risks. And you've got to find a balance here. And I agree with you that the balance is going to be different from what we were used to pre-pandemic. Yeah. But it's not just to say, follow the science. That's not the answer. You have to start weighing other factors now and making, and, you know, and, and figuring out how does society move forward with, a, you know, look, I mean, I, I read this, uh, there was an article this weekend where they were saying, that there is a possibility of long-term COVID for Omicron. Okay, well, yes, maybe there is. Well, what does that mean? Does right, that mean right. we what should, are we gonna stay, do with that should we stay home? 
I mean, it, it's like they're. I don't even think they have an answer. They've been the people in power have been so inconsistent from the beginning. It was like, oh, um, just hunker down in your house for two weeks and then we'll be good. And then, of course, you know, here we are two years later. And then also it was like, oh, you know, we finally have the vaccine. Get the vaccine and then you'll be good. And it's like, nope, there's still few. But, but not some everyone can get the vaccine yet. You still have to think of all the young kids that can't get the vaccine. So it's like you have to think about them. They people under the ages of five. Yeah, well, five. Like, I, I have, yeah, I have tons of nieces and nephews it's that are true. under the ages of five. And you want to protect them like they can't get the vaccine yet that's so you have to do our part to like help them 100 percent true but so then and now, and now the you're right and that's the really hard part of this what do you do yeah because you're right a lot of these articles come out and they float new information without action items I, and harvey I, I, is saying what is the action item from this new piece of data I, that we got? I, I, I was reading jamie raskin's book i just finished jamie raskin's book and he was talking about, because, you know, his son committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about, I think he said it was a shocking statistic. It used to be one in 17 uh, young people who had considered suicide. It has now changed. One in four have considered it seriously in the last 30 days as at the time he wrote the book. That's crazy. It's jarring. And staying That's home jarring. does not help anyone's mental health at all. It's yeah. it's terrible. It's daunting. It brings you to dark places, makes you think of dark times. Like, it's not good. People need to be social. They need to have friends. And, you know, you talking, Harvey, kind of like how you mentioned about, like, well, you know, what's the plan here? What's the action? I think we all can agree that going to a restaurant, wearing a mask, walking in, and then taking it off, sitting down, yeah, that is theater. not going to work. It, yeah. it's, it's theater. It, it, and, it, it, and that part really bothers it's, it's, me. Yeah. It's theater. It's yes. dumb and it's theater. Yes. That if, if, it's, if it's safe enough to sit at a table and eat and talk and laugh as you're chewing, how— why do you have to put it on when you walk to the bathroom you walk, two feet away? Right. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. Silly. That stuff is theater. But but that's why people are just saying, "My They're God, it off. it's yeah." It's like give us something that makes sense that we can live with, where we can protect people, where it's not bulletproof because you're not going to get bulletproof unless you isolate, right? But I think what people are saying now is the next cause of action is to move on with your life and do exactly what. They're, they originally said not to do, which is see your friends, hug your family, and go to a restaurant and chum it up with people. And yeah, I mean, the virus I'm okay came on the hugging part. But Courtney is right. There are a lot of people who cannot get the vaccine. Yep. There are people who are highly, you know, at risk. And we need to be mindful of that. But but here's the it's thing. Now 12-year-olds are able to get the vaccine, right? And soon enough, it's going to come where it's going to be available to everybody. Well, you know, kids with their parents' consent. So at that point, is that the level where we say, okay, we move on now? Is I that would say the standard? Yes. I'd say that is okay. the big, the big was, sticking point. Yeah. That'll, that'll convince a lot of people when under right. five-year-olds start start getting it. But it's it's complicated. I mean, it it's interesting to hear her perspective, though, to bring it back to Barry, because you don't hear that loud perspective often. You do hear the loud anti-mandate, anti-vaccine perspective right. all across the board. You don't hear the loud, I did the job already. Uh, everyone else is scared to say, let's move on. But I'm part of the good team who got vaccinated, who used to wipe my Pringles can, and I want to move on. That's the perspective that has been missing, and Barry said it pretty well. <laughs> And, and and the one thing I want to say just finally is that, you know, look, she's gotten a lot of people agreeing with her, a lot of people vilifying her for what she said. But I mean, look, if somebody is, you know, talking conspiracy theories about vaccines, you know, that's one thing. Nail them for that. <laughs> yeah. But with 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 what she's saying, it's like we should be comfortable having this debate. Yeah. And to and and to go after somebody and say that they're despicable and they're awful and it's like no 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 she is raising a point that a lot of people embrace right now and if you don't talk about it and all you say is she's an asshole for what she's done if you say that you're never going to convince anybody who might be like minded and and that's not the way to handle it and she's right that you know if if you dare say what she's saying and she knew this would happen you know, you're viewed as this right wing Trumper and all this stuff. But that's not what she is. That's not what she's saying. No, no. OK, Adele. Still crying. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Adele called all of she like think. Well, we all know she had to cancel her 
Vegas postpone, show. Right? Yes, postpone her Vegas show. She because did cancel her Vegas show. We don't know if she had to. That's been the big debate. But anyway. Yes, on. because of COVID <laughs> reasons and like production issues. So she FaceTimed a whole bunch of fans that were supposed to be at the show and she was crying. They were chanting. It's like, it's okay. It's okay to make her feel better about it. But I'm she still was like, offering fans drink tokens. Yes. Oh, so, so, <laughs> what so a let, forgiving here, audience. She's so li so li listen to this because this is really funny because she's offering drink to tokens and then all of a sudden she realizes, oh my God, these are mine. These are yeah. 14 year old. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Love you, Dad. We love you. We love you. We love you. I'm so to see excited. You. I love you. Oh, you're so excited. 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 Oh,
to make your point that you're not dating someone for the money. Yes, you can make it for that point, but you can't. But you can't convince me that you're not dating Kanye for some other reason. Well, Kanye yeah. raises your profile. It Would is, she be at Paris Fashion Week? How she was just oh this my weekend? god, the no. jean outfit yes. oh, oh, with the Madonna dress. Well, did you see today? I mean, they, it looks yeah. like the Adams family. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's funny because Kim went and all uh, went in all black this weekend. So to like see like them. I mean, but but Kanye's got this. It, it was yeah, bizarre. Julia Fox is getting a lot of heat too, by the way, for her makeup. Did you see her makeup? Yes. She had like dark um, like eyeshadow that went all the way out to her temples. And everyone's like saying it's basically when you like ruin your eyeliner and you're like, oh, I got to do it just a little bit out it's to when, like fix it. And you're it's when you wake it. up from a Saturday morning and you're like, whoa, what yeah. happened? It was pretty brutal. This could be a sincere relationship, right? But there's nothing Julia Fox can say to convince me of well, that. Except, That's the problem. Well, yeah. She went from okay. Julia Fox nobody to Julia Fox dating Kanye West overnight. There's nothing you can say that'll and convince me. And Kanye has been here's, pleading here's, for Kim still. Here's, yeah. the like, argu- here's the argument in the counter. The argument is Kanye West is brilliant. Kanye West has a million things going for him. He is brilliant. He is creative. He is at the top of his game in music. He is a, an incredible designer. Kanye West has a lot going for him. So just to say, oh, it's got to be for fame, you got to look at Kanye and say that he is a huge celebrity with a lot behind it. So, mm-hmm. so oh, definitely. So There's that, many and that can be that very attractive. And that's yeah. very sure. attractive. Yes. yes. That the problem is <laughs> when you start out by saying, honey, I've dated billionaires my entire life. What does that mean? Yeah. What is she saying? Yeah. It means she doesn't need to be with him. No, no, no. I think it means he, she's into billionaires. And what does that yeah. mean? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, what happened? But also, he, what, 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 what happened? With what? You said you dated two billionaires. No, two dates with one billionaire. Ah, uh, what happened? But you eventually he... followed your heart. <laughs> this was like he was he was ninety two when yeah. he passed. No, no, he's he's not that old actually. <laughs> he owns a. Uh, I'll just say uh, he owns Howard. an energy drink that everybody here has had at some point in their lives. God, I know oh, who it is now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, it was actually really embarrassing. The very first date, uh, we went to a restaurant and we ordered. Um, uh, what is it called? What are those? Not asparagus. The things that you eat and there's you. Um, Broccoli? Edamame? Yeah. No, no. Uh, artichokes? Shoot. Artichoke. We ordered like a appetizer of artichoke. Where, where is this? How the hell did you pick that up? Right. Okay. And where is this going? Where, where are we going? going? Wait, did you eat the full yes. artichoke? It doesn't you matter. Hold on. I want to hear what happened. I've never <laughs> had the full artichoke. I did not grow up with artichokes. My in- Never. Oh, that was the first time I so ever had seen. you didn't much of it is inedible. And he's up. like, we're talking. And he's like, oh, go ahead. Like, eat the appetizer. Like, don't wait for me. Like, go ahead, dig in. So I was like, okay. And I kind of like hesitated and waited for him to eat it because I don't know how you eat this thing. So when I ate it, I took a bite out of the entire thing and <laughs> swallowed it. And he's like, are you okay? They could, it could and kill I you. A large part of it is indigestible. Like <laughs> I was it's called it's called choke. Was, it's no, called no. choke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, Charlie, Charlie. Okay, that would explain the first date. What happened in the second? Yeah. Date? Uh, <laughs> the oh, second man. date was not good either. <laughs> but, uh, uh, he's married now, so uh, there's that. Good for him. He well, congratulations to, to him. And you're on your way. <laughs> uh, okay, we are gonna wrap it. Uh, you can listen. Uh, do to you want to talk about how Aaron Rodgers is out of the playoffs and everyone is so happy? Jimmy G beat him. Did you watch any of the games yes. this weekend? I, mean, I heard everyone c- screaming around because my the games were incredible like, this weekend. It was like we were say. watching Super Bowl well, games like all through the week. Uh, like it was, it was unbelievable. Which that one was, was with the Bills? That the was Bills, Bills and the Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick oh, Mahomes Chiefs, right. had 13 yes. seconds to get 13 minute field goal uh, uh, into field go- field range goal. How that, do you say that? Wow, Why are you looking wow. at us? All the words were there, but they were not in the right order. But just the idea that it went that it went back and forth. Yeah, that was crazy. It was just was back and insane. forth. It was and now there's a big thing about overtime that people think it's unfair because. Yeah, because he just well, marched down the field and won the game. The yes. guys didn't even have a chance to. to right. <laughs> you have to be able to have a chance back to like get another touchdown. I, I found that unsatisfying. It, it makes too. me so annoyed. I've always hated that in the NFL. Okay, we are going to leave you. Uh, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, anywhere you listen to the podcasts. Bye, Bye guys. guys. 